Oh god, here they come. Eat lead. Oh, rude! Ah! Get off! Oh no! <laughs> it's crashed. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Nearly Men channel. I'm Gary Hawk Simmons, one third of the Nearly Men. A group of guys who have nothing to do with the video game industry. We don't make them, we don't sell them, and we're not even that good at them. In fact, you've probably kicked your asses at some point online. If this is your first time on the channel, hello and welcome. If you're a return viewer, welcome back. You can catch me here each week with a new video, or if you want to watch me stream, I'll be on Twitch under Blunderbore87, or on our Facebook page, The Nearly Men Video Game Podcast. And of course, you can catch our actual podcast on iTunes. We'll leave a link at the end in the description. In this video, I'm going to share my thoughts and opinions on Sony's latest exclusive game, Days Gone by Ben Studios. Now, Days Gone, as most of you know, was announced way back in 2015 and was finally released on April the 26th, 2019. It had big boots to fill and it's been met with a lot of mixed reviews from critics and casual gamers alike. I think this is because of the hype train and also because Sony has been backing a lot of really, really top-notch games over the past few years. As always, I'll break my review down into four sections. Story, graphics, gameplay and enjoyment, then give you the final verdict. Is it a nearly men hit, a nearly men miss, or a nearly men nearly? Oh, so they don't like light. Eh, I just shot you in the head. So, to be upfront and honest, this review is based on the first four to eight hours of gameplay, and we'll come to why that is in a wee minute. But you must admit, if a game can't grab your attention properly in four to eight hours, it's not really doing something right, is it? And that's where the story comes in. Now we open up on this kind of generic, end of the world, something's happened, people are dying, there's blood everywhere, they're screaming, it's very sad. Think The Last of Us, but just not done as well. Um, so we have this like big noble sacrifice and you really want to feel something, I think, but you find it really hard because you've known these characters for two seconds, you've not seen where they came from, you don't know their relationship. The dude has on a backwards uh, baseball cap, so he just looks like a douche. So when the noble sacrifice happens, you're kind of like, Huh. Okay. And then we have a time jump. Yay, a time jump. Um, to two years later or something like that. And it's just like, alright, cool, this is a thing. Um, so for me, straight away there's a disconnect with the characters. I find it very hard to connect with them or care about their plight in the story. And also, he still has that backwards baseball cap on. What? There's also big inconsistencies between the bad guys eh, and storyline elements and the gameplay and I know, I know that happens in most games but for me it's just, it takes away the fear and the realism like the freakers, freakers are attracted to, to noise and blood and sound uh, and then it's just you're on your motorbike and you're running around and doing stuff making lots of noise and like three many enemies might appear and you really expect a giant horde um, this might improve later on in the game, as I said, first four to eight hours, I'm just not that sure. We also have, I think, one of the most irritating video game sidekick characters since Otis and Dead Rising and Nico's cousin in Grand Theft Auto 4, and that is Boozer, the main character's best pal, cousin, brother, thing. Still not quite sure what the relationship is there. And he's just constantly a plot device in the... Uh, getting himself in trouble and, and just and giving you missions and phoning you and shouting off nonsense and oh he just is exhausting I just wish I could go up to him and take a shotgun and put it in his face and just get rid of him because it just makes it rather unenjoyable for myself I have had a few major plot points in the time I've been playing is it compelling me to push forward? not really do I want to find out what these characters lives are liking up to? kinda when I go back, will I care that much? I doubt it. Weird zombie so things. Oh! Yeah, we. Who? Now, graphics. Graphics to a lot of people are one of the most important aspects of a video game. And you'll have heard me say this before, but to me, they don't matter that much. I grew up with PS1, PS2, gosh, Sega. Um, and I quite frequently go back to the PS1, PS2 games. So to me, graphics, yeah, they don't make or break a game. I, I can deal with bad graphics. However, this game is a game which does not have bad graphics. I mean, it is stunning. Um, 
the environments are varied and detailed, the weather effects are beautifully done. I mean, when you're driving around on your bike and you're coming in and out of tunnels and there's one point you come through a tunnel and it's this big kind of foggy, misty area and there's a bunch of deer running by and I actually go, oh deer, um, as if I've never seen a deer in real life. Um, so it does catch you with some beautifully striking moments. The character models uh, for the main character uh, and the humanoids are well detailed, nicely animated, even that backwards baseball cap is very pretty. Where the game falls down for me is the enemy models. Now I get it, it's a big horde game. However, I say in my Plague Tale review, it just feels like everyone died in the exact same outfit or in two years, all the freakers went and bought the same outfit from Hot Topic or wherever they are in America and are all kicking around in these brown shirts and janky, janky trousers. I've not seen a lot of enemy variety as well because I'm quite early in the game. So we've seen the the adult normal freakers and we've seen the, the, the controversial children freakers. Um, but yeah, it's just a wee bit underwhelming when you compare it to say Resident Evil 2. I know I'm biased. The remake, they have about, is it 10 individual male zombie models, five female zombie models. Um, but they switch them up a lot, they'll change the, the, the faces with the bodies and very rarely do they have the same body and the same zombie horde. So it feels like you're being attacked by multiple different citizens um, and it just it leaves, a, leaves a bit of a bad taste in my mouth when this big budget game is a wee bit lazy it feels like in the end of the department and it just makes it a little bit less believable and a wee bit dull. It's a wee bit, like, give me Last of Us vibes. The gameplay. The gameplay is very safe. And there's nothing wrong with safe, however, it feels like I've done it all before. It's almost like the developers looked at all the top games over the past, what, five to seven years, um, late PS3 and the whole PS4 life cycle, and went, ooh, all these different elements worked. Let's just take them all and use them. So you've got, like, um, Hunter's vision, which is like eagle vision. You've got um, a little, and uh, vision things in Tomb Raider as well. Don't we didn't miss that Tomb Raider? You're being lazy. We have a uh, construction items on the fly. Uh, we have uh, liberating aid shelters and having to um, dismount the alarms before baddies catch up, like in Far Cry. And there's just a lot of things which we've done for so long in an open world game that it is. It's kind of like, oh, here we go again. Um, and that's just maybe a bit of my personal bias because I'm kind of over open world games just now. The last open world game that I really enjoyed was Spider-Man. Um, and also I said earlier, there's like design decisions, like the, the villages and stuff is like a scene straight out of Horizon Zero Dawn. So it's just a wee bit safe and a wee bit, oh, we know you're like this because you've done it before. The motorbike, which I was dreading because I'm awful with motorbikes and games is actually a highlight. It, it controls really well, um, it's quite fun to ride around on, it's got damage uh, so you need to f uh, like fix the engine or put the gas in, um, you can upgrade it and finding the gas isn't as tedious as I thought it might be. Um, it's actually quite fun and that, that's one of the bits where you're thinking oh I need gas, oh what am I going to do? Um, so the motorbike actually is good. Gameplay when it comes to gunplay I'd heard the gunplay was pretty poor, or the combat was poor. Mm, I've actually found the combat quite, quite, quite fine, quite satisfactory. Um, the weapons are controlled well. Um, you've got melee weapons as well as uh, handguns, shotguns, hunting rifles. You can pick up bad guys' weapons when they drop them, which we do enjoy. And there's that stealthy element because you've got a little shank, um, and you sneak up behind humans or freaks. Um, and stealth them, and the stealth can sometimes be a wee bit intense, so the stealth is done really well. Uh, the, the gunplay is fine. And I think that's what sums up the gameplay and the graphics and the story for me so far. Everything's just fine. Oh, so I got a suppressor for my car engine. It's interesting. Cool. So enjoyment. Am I enjoying my time with this game? Kinda. It borrows bits from other games. It's got a very cliche story that was seen in cinema and games for a bajillion years. 
I did feel compelled at times to push myself forward and unearth a little bit of information. Um, there's the uh, there's a storyline between a guy in the radio that the main character's got a real issue with, and it'd be interesting to find out what the issue is there. And when you piece little bits of the story together, like the um, no spoilers, but you have to go to a graveyard and find an item, and you find a body that you knew. Uh, there's small bits of the story so far that have pushed me forward. I did get to a big settlement and kind of switched off during the cutscene because the characterisation was a bit crap. Um, so I need to go back and kind of refocus on that. And then I was heading to up, up north, I guess you'd call it, and the game crashed and froze me out. And I was like, ugh, oh, whatever. Um, so am I enjoying it? Yeah. Am I underwhelmed? Yeah. Why play it to completion? Maybe. I don't know. Shit. Oh no! <laughs> it's crashed. <laughs> so final thoughts. Is it a nearly men hat? A nearly men miss? Or a nearly men nearly? For me, it's a nearly men nearly. It's almost there and you'll have got that vibe as I've been talking throughout the video. There is just other games that have done it so much better or films that have done it so much better that you don't have to invest so much time in. But the game-wise, you've got Last of Us, Resident Evil 2. Even World War Z, with the, the Horde thing coming at you, if you're looking for that excitement and exhilaration. Am I going to go back and give it a bit more time? Yes. Will I update everyone? Yes. I'll, I'll do another video or I'll tweet or I'll Facebook. I might even live stream uh, how I'm getting on with the game and it might change my opinion. I would say as a hardcore zombie fan, wait for a sale. Don't buy it full price. Wait for a sale or even better, get a loan of it from a pal. Do we still do that these days? I do. Give it to someone or get it from someone and have a shot and see how you feel. Could be worth it in the end, just now the payout's not quite what I expected. So thank you for watching this thoughts and opinion video on Days Gone, Sony Exclusive Game by Bane Studio. As I said earlier, you can catch me on here each week, you can watch me stream on Twitch or the Facebook page, you can catch us on our podcast, um, I'll leave all the descriptions on the next image with all our links, uh, and until next week, see ya!